morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It is, what is it? It's Saturday, the 30th of April, last day of, uh, last day of April. My, as I was setting things up, it kept wanting to push me to May 1st. I don't know why. Yeah. Maybe even Facebook wants to, excuse me. Mm. I had an apple before we sat down here and it's giving me a little, <clears throat> Yeah. Where was I? May. May. Uh, maybe Facebook wants to get out of April and into May, too. I don't know. But yesterday was a beautiful day. Um, uh, I was doing some work helping family outside and uh, back and forth, indoors, outdoors. But um, it was a beautiful day to be moving around and doing stuff. Not too hot, not too cool, not raining. It's gonna rain today at some point, though it looks like. So, uh, so good morning. Glad you're here with me to spend a little bit of time in God's Word. Where I'm gonna try and move us along a little bit today, because I, I've got some time-dependent stuff I've got to get done. So, let's. Uh, I didn't clean my glasses either. Holy moly! Well, that makes this a little more difficult and slows things down a little bit because I can't see. You know. The resurrection is going to be wonderful because I won't need lens cleaner for my glasses anymore. Because I won't need my glasses. Of course, I don't look good without glasses. I maybe that's just a bias, but I, I think I've got beady little eyes, and I think that if I didn't have glasses, I I would be I don't know. Yeah, but picking out glasses is difficult. Those who wear glasses know. You think it's easy to just go into a, a optical center, get your eyes checked, and pick out glasses? I for for like eight years maybe longer. I wore basically the same frame. I'd, I'd go in and I'd pick the same frame every time I needed new frames. <clears throat> this last time I got these ones that are clear on the sides and I'm not sure I like them. I thought about getting the um, black ones that are just square and black, but I just I couldn't do that either. Anyway, let's go ahead here and get started. Uh oh, I'm going to sneeze. Okay, now let's get started. That, yeah. Daily prayer for individuals and families. If you have a... Oh, we haven't said hi to everybody. What are you doing here? I know you want to go quick, but... Hey, Kenny, good morning. Glad to have you here with us. Noticed you've been back here on Saturdays anyway. Glad you spent a little time with us. Uh, Neil and Geraldine, good morning to you. There's Jill and John. Good morning. Up there in Rinlander. Debbie and Grant and Ann, good morning to you guys. Blueberry pancake kind of day. Yeah, I hope you're using that pancake mix that you that you got. Glenn, good morning to you. Hopefully we'll be seeing you here before you've got a scatter. Renee, good morning. Glad you're here. Leela, good morning. Glad to have you. Michael and Karen, good morning. 61, huh? I don't think we're going to get that high today. We're at 45 now, and I, I think we're going to lose out with uh, overcast and stuff, but maybe tomorrow. Connie, good morning. Up in Harshaw there. Yeah, thank you, Connie. It might come again to what I've been doing and uh, what I did yesterday. And such involves a little dust. And my allergies are reminding me that. All right. Daily prayer for individuals and families. Lutheran Service Book, page 295, if you have such a thing. That's where we begin here. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and I will my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Yes, on the pancake mix. <laughs> hey, our psalm today, Psalm 106, verses 16 to 23. Psalm 106. Oh. Hmm, I see. <clears throat> when men in the camp were jealous of Moses, and Aaron, the Holy One of the Lord, the earth opened and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Abiram. Fire also broke out in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. 
<clears throat> they made a calf in Horeb and worshipped a metal image. They exchanged the glory of God for the image of an ox that eats grass. They forgot God, their Savior, who had done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham, and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. Therefore he said he would destroy them. Had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him to turn away his wrath from destroying them. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hey, Brenda, good morning. 52 with a high of 60 in Kalamazoo. Awesome. Awesome. Here's Bonnie. Bonnie chiming in there. She was having some issues getting logged in here, getting connected. Our reading today, Exodus chapter 32, 1 through 14. <clears throat> Guys, I'm going to tell you now, this one's not so pretty. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, Up, make us gods who shall go before us. As for this, Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So Aaron said to them, Take off the rings of gold that are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the rings of gold that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. <clears throat> and he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made a golden calf. And they said, These are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down for your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way that I commanded them. They have made for themselves a golden calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, in order that I may make a great nation of you. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent did he bring them out, to kill them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turning, Turn from your burning anger, and relent from this disaster against your people. Remember Abram, or Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants to whom you swore by your own self, and said to them, I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have promised, I will give to your offspring, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord relented from the disaster that he had spoken of bringing on his people. We're not done with the golden calf yet. It's, it's, it's in the text for Sunday. Uh, so we'll read that on Monday. And then, and then get into the Monday reading as well. We'll probably talk more about the Sunday reading than we will about the Monday reading. But, because I want to keep this, we want to stay in the Old Testament. We don't pay enough attention to it. we got a year. Um, let's, let's keep in mind, friends, that at uh, our innermost root, Mankind is wicked. Oh, good morning, Kathy. Uh, mankind is wicked and turned away from God. 
That's our nature as we are born, to hate God, to despise him. Um, and in the absence of a true God, uh, the true God, man will seek out gods for himself, right? I mean, there's a reason that the first commandment is you shall not, you shall have no other gods before me. There's a reason for that. Because that's, when you violate any other commandment, that one gets violated too. Because, uh, oh, hey, John, Janet, on your way home? Okay, well, be safe. Keep your eyes on the road there. Uh, whenever you violate any of the other commandments or any of other, other of God's words, um, you're saying to God, I know better than you do. I'm a, I'm, I'm more wise than you are. And so, therefore, I'm my own God. Um, you know, I remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Well, I, yeah, I should be uh, in God's house to hear the word read, but I'm going to stay here and worship my pillow, or I'm going to go to the football game, or I'm going to go fishing, or I've got to wash my hair, or i got land to view, or people to visit, or whatever. Um you're saying God has given you gifts, but you'd rather do something else. Really? And I know that sounds harsh, but after all, what did God do for you? Well, he put his, his only son to death for you. Talk about harsh. So Moses is up on the mountain and he's receiving the word of God and the people are still down below the mountain and they're hearing the thunder and the lightning. But Moses, chances are God rubbed him out. After all, God had already, we already know God said, don't come near the mountain or I'll destroy you. Um, not even an animal should come near. So they're down in the valley. Moses is gone. And, you know, they've been with the Egyptians. Um for a long time, the Egyptians had idols to all their different gods. And so they they went to Aaron, who was Moses' right-hand man, his brother. <clears throat> and they said, hey, Moses is dead. It's a done deal. Make us some gods. Give us some images. Give us a graven image to worship. That's why it's called a graven image. It's because you use a graving tool to make the idol. Bring me your rings and your ear rings and your nose rings and all all that gold. And he used it and he, he made a calf. Made the image of a calf, an idol. And um, the 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 calf is a young version of the god of the Baals, um, who's a, who's a bullheaded god, um, but. I don't think they've encountered the Canaanites yet. They're they're still they're still at Mount Sinai. They're a long ways from Can the land of Cana. <clears throat> but they chose to make a calf, as the psalm said. They turn over God eternal for an image of an ox that eats grass. We're quick as a people um, to have changes of heart. Um, we're we're quick to move from one thing to another. Um, some people say that it's good because we can adjust to situations um, and, and adapt uh, to situations quickly. You go into a new job and, you know, by the end of a couple of weeks, you've been in that job all your life. Um, you get a new new idea and you can adjust to it fairly quickly. We, we adapt. Humankind's adapt to be comfortable where they're at quite often. Um, um, and so when when we begin to think or believe that that God is absent, we're quick to remove God from our lives and, and put our own gods in their place. And that's what Israel's doing. <clears throat> you know, they're God's people. It's they're Israel. They're they're the children of Jacob, um, who's the child of um, Isaac, who's the child of Abraham, who God made a promise to. I will bring your children to the to the promised land, and it will be theirs forever. Um, 
But man, they tick God off. And and we we're applying a a human emotion of jealousy and rage to God. Um, but it it it's not God is not subject to human emotion. That's the false gods are right. That's the but we have to. We have to anthropomorphize. We have to make God seem more like us for this for this purpose. When when Moses put this down, there's no question that God's nose burned hot, which is which is the Hebrew idiom for being angry, right? What is he angry at? He's angry at unfaithfulness, uh, unholiness, lawlessness, right? Um, and he says to Moses. I'll go find you another group of people to lead, right? You just stay here on the mountaintop. I'm going to rub them out, and, and, and we'll find another group of people. But Moses did what God wants us to do. He said, wait a minute, God, Lord, you made a promise, and you do not lie. You made a promise to Abraham that you gave to Isaac, that you gave to his son Jacob and to all of his sons, Israel, to bring them into the promised land and to care for them. I haven't even gotten back down the hill with the Ten Commandments yet. Give us a little time. Um, warn them of your wrath, yeah, but you know, if you go wiping out everybody who you claim is your people, people are going to mock you. The other people are going to mock you. God knew this from before the time Moses spoke. Um, we'll see when we get to, well, we saw with, did we see with Abraham and Lot? I don't remember if we saw that, the destruction of God, Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm sure we've read that. Um, but even when Abraham prays for the salvation or the protection of Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, if there's 40 people, Lord, would you, 40 good people, would you still destroy it? No, I won't destroy it. If there's 20 good, no, I won't destroy it. 10, no, I won't. 5, no, I won't destroy it. I won't destroy it for the sake of one good person. But the minute that Lot and his family are out of there, who are the only good people, the only people of God who are in that, in that city, gone. By the way, the unearthed ruins that they think are Sodom and Gomorrah, but there's a whole argument about the whole thing. But it doesn't matter because faith is faith. It's not proved by archaeology. It's proved by faith. It's proved by the Word of God. No, Moses implored the Lord. He prayed to God to have mercy upon the people. And while God's anger did not immediately abate, uh, he said, you're right. He said, and I know this, I will, I will, uh, uh, the, the Lord relented, that's what it is. The Lord relented from the disaster that he had spoken of bringing to his people. Right. He forgave them. He's overlooking the sins of the former until the coming of his son Christ. Because he knows at the beginning that his son will be sent many thousand years later to die on the cross, even for the stubborn, stiff-necked Israel, Israelites. And stiff-necked's a, a good way to say that. They just won't, they won't turn, right? When you've got a bull you're trying to lead and it won't go where you're trying to lead it, or a plow, a, a oxen when you're plowing, they won't go. They, they're stiff-necked. You can't pull on the reins hard enough to get them to turn. Stiff-necked animals. But thanks be to God, he is merciful. He has mercy upon his people. And his, his goal is not the death of the sinner, but that all should turn from their sin towards Christ, and by faith in him, have life. That's what it's all about. Even in the time of Israel, even in the Old Testament. That's gospel, friends. I, so many people want to say, well, the Old Testament's all law, and the New Testament's all gospel. Well, no, this is gospel. This right here is gospel. God relenting and not destroying humanity or the Israelites for their sin. That's gospel. That's the grace of God that comes in Christ Jesus. It's gospel. The lie is he could do it. And it sure seems like he wants to. But the gospel is that he didn't. 
because he didn't, you and I are here today. Even further, because he didn't, his son came to die for you. So that even when your old fallen nature that's in you goes lusting after and seeking after false gods to fill what you think is a void, he calls you back. He reminds you, you shall have no other gods before me. And when you, when you turn back, and when you, when you turn away from your false gods and your sin, and you look to Christ saying, Lord, have mercy upon me, he already has in the blood of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your mercy, so guide the course of this world that we may forgive as we have been forgiven and joy joyfully serve you in godly peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our prayers for our, oh no, Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Saturday morning, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Righteousness, shine into my heart and life this day. Help me to reflect your light so that those who do not yet know you as Lord and Savior might be directed to you. Thank you for bearing the guilt of my sins. Let the sin and evil that may threaten today have no power over me. Grant me the grace to recognize your will and the faith to do it in all my dealings with others this day. Let me be guided by this precept. Whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. Keep me connected to you as a branch of the true vine, that I may draw the strength to abound in good works from you. May you be glorified today in all that I do. It is in your most holy name that I pray. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with all who suffer in body, mind, or soul on this Saturday morning, on this last day of April. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would be especially with those who have asked for our prayers, with Anne, Larry, Peter, Rose, Karen, Olive, James, Pat, Lois, Don, Brianne, Ashley, Susie, Bob, and all who call upon your most holy name. Grant them strength by faith in you and comfort by your holy word through your Holy Spirit. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, God's blessings, my friends, to you and to those who have joined us later in the day. Uh, we'll be back here Monday with our daily devotions. But uh, tomorrow, if you have a chance, 
go to church. Go be amongst the witnesses to the promises of salvation in Christ Jesus. Take, eat, take, drink, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins, and pray. Pray for each other, and pray for our nation, and pray for God's good mercy and grace in Christ Jesus. God's blessings to you, and we will see you Monday.